Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and a couple of weeks ago, a Sprite 1.3 came out. Now, that may not sound like a very big deal, but for put in perspective, 1.2 came out in 2017, so this isn't something that happens all that often. So what we're going to do is check out some of the very cool new features in a Sprite. You can see it in action right here. Uh, it is one of the most popular pixel art applications out there. Uh, this is an example, by the way, this example comes from the Phaser, a Sprite example, uh, and then we're going to go ahead and see right here, you got full animation support, like so, multiple different animations. So let's go and show uh, the idle, and then the running animation, obviously built out of a variety of different layers, and so on. So what exactly is new in this particular release? Well, one of the first things that people are going to absolutely love, because I know this is a priority for very many people, is if you go to Edit and then Preferences, you will now notice Theme Mode Light or dark. Yes, we now have a dark mode. Uh, it, it has a couple of glitches with certain things not showing up well. So for example, the home release notes are very, very hard to read uh, in dark mode. But basically, uh, yep, you now have a dark mode available in a sprite, which is definitely a very nice new feature. On top of that, we have another pretty small feature, but this is going to be very useful for game developers. If you come on in here to your sprite properties, you now have the ability to tag in our arbitrary data. So arbitrary data. So you can do something like hit points equals 40 to 24 or whatever. So if you're using this as like a lightweight um, character creator at the same time, you can start packing that data in with your sprites. Now there are actually sprite loaders available for a variety of game engines. I will show you where you can see a video that I made about Unity and Godot that will load the A sprite files directly. And they now have the ability to actually put this metadata in there uh, for individual sprites. But probably the biggest new feature of a sprite in general is this guy right here. So we'll go ahead and create a new sheet. So the 512 by 512. So a pretty big sprite. And we'll go ahead and create that. So the reason why I did this is because we now have this new capability. I come down here to my layer. I'm going to right click. And now what you can do is convert to tile map. Uh, so we can say, okay, how big to make each grid. So we're going to 16 by 16 pixels. And we will call this my tile map. And it will create a new tile set out of it, or you could load a tile set in, I believe. We do have options available here. So if you want to have um, some flipping and, and other options, you can do so. And we go ahead and create it. So how do you actually use this tile map? Well, basically, uh, assume that each one of these was a grid. What we could do is basically just come in here and literally start drawing on our tile map. And then we're going to notice this. It automatically started populating down here. So it's actually creating a tile set to go with your tile map. So you can basically just create your world. Uh, so for example, here, here, let's say I made, you know, a red house like so. Well, it's automatically going to take this area right here and split it into a variety of tiles over here. Now, the cool thing is you also have uh, the tile mode. So you can actually switch with the way that tiles are selected by toggling these options right here. So you got manual mode, you could have uh, auto mode, you've got uh, stack, don't modify existing tiles, or create new ones if it comes down to it. And then the cool thing here is you can then come down here from your palette and literally pick any of the tiles that you just painted with. Now I don't know if you can do, oh, you can do multi-select. Oh, it doesn't work though. That's too bad. Uh, so you do have the ability to come down here, again, pick the tile that you wish to work with, and then you can paint accordingly using those tiles. So uh, you can basically start creating a tile set by just painting using a sprite, uh, have it automatically create the tiles for you. Then you switch over into just tile mode and create more of the map using that property. So this again, combined with these options over here, oh, I did not mean to switch over. Let me go back over here. With these options over here, you can encode some metadata in there as well. And you can actually turn this into a lightweight map editor. Now you're probably not going to do that. What you're going to do is create your map, you know, you're drawing like normal and then tiling and stamping using the tile properties over here. And then you're going to go ahead and export that guy out as a tile set. And then you've got control over all the various different settings available here. Uh, and then you just basically would import that tile set in. Uh, you'd have it create a JSON file as well. And then you can import that into something like a Godot game engine, a game maker or a Unity or whatever, anything that supports it. And then hopefully all of the... Um, the a sprite importers have been updated to support this functionality but i haven't actually checked that out so those are the uh the three biggest things in my humble opinion you do have this new dark mode you have this tile mo set mode tiles definitely the biggest new feature of 1.3 and very good for game developers in general and then we have got that data properties but by no means is that it 
So if you want to go ahead and check out Ace Sprite, it is available at asprite.org. If you have never heard of it before, well, first off, there is a trial version of it available for Windows and Mac OS as well as Ubuntu Linux. Uh, it is commercial software. It's about 20 bucks, a little bit less than that. You can also build it from code if you wish to do so. Uh, I'm not covering the details of that. I think I did a video on how to do that in the past. But you see here, you got full sets of animation and layer support, things like onion skinning in uh, red blue mode for showing the next and previous frames and that kind of stuff. Uh, you have a whole bunch of stuff for working from a fixed color palette. You've got shading tools in there, custom brushes, blend modes, tiling support, which also would work well with if you're working to create, uh, you know, PS1 style tileable textures. Good tools there for as well. A variety Variety of import and export formats, including the ability to create custom texture atlases. And now you've got the ability to create tile maps as well. You see here, again, it's $20 USD. So that is the current price tag. Now, if you're actually going to go ahead and buy this, uh, it is available in a couple ways. I'll get back to that in just a second. In terms of the 1.3 release, well, what is new here? Well, the big new feature, the main new feature is the support for tile map layers. We saw that in action early on. It basically allows you to create tile maps and tile sets you can use then in uh, your tile editor of choice, something like LDTK or Tiled or you know Game Maker, Godot, whatever. Uh, on top of that, we do have other features. Again, uh, dark theming. And we do now have skewing transformations, which is kind of cool. Uh, text fields uh, for the transformation, resize tags, dragging border, repeat field for tags, uh, and so on and so forth, as, as well as that global user data for sprites. Uh, so yeah, quite a bit to like in this particular release. And again, these releases do not happen all the time. There's a ton of like beta releases in between them, but this 1.2 release, again, the last time 1.2 was released was in September of 2017. So 1.3 is definitely a big deal. And tile map is basically one of the star features of this particular guide. So as I mentioned earlier on, there are a couple of ways you can buy a Sprite. Uh, the, the, the most obvious way is to buy it on um, Steam. Uh, now, the challenge here, you're going to notice also this is $22 Canadian, which would be more like $14 or $15 USD. Uh, so you can buy it this way, but you can also buy it on Humble. And this is actually how I would recommend doing it. First off, you will notice that the price uh, is a little bit lower. I wish the menu would go away. There we go. Uh, the price is actually a little bit lower right now. There's a Steam sale coming up. So that's not really the reason why I would suggest it that way. This guy doesn't ever go on sale for much more than this. It's one of the biggest discounts I've seen is generally 20 or 30% off. Now, the the reason why I recommend Humble, well, first off, I get a commission if you use my link, which is very cool. But on top of that, what you get if you get it on Humble is you get a Steam key. So it's just the same as buying it on Steam. You redeem it on Steam and you have it available there. But the problem with using game development tools on Steam is they lock you to one computer running at a time. So if you want to work on multiple machines at the same time, I know it's a bit of an edge use case, but you just can't do it. Whereas if you buy it on Humble, not only do you get a Steam redeem key, but you also have a direct download available here uh, for all three major platforms. This is huge in my opinion and you don't need to use Steam at all. As you'll notice, I've never redeemed my key. It's just uh, game development tools on Steam annoy me because I run multiple different machines. Uh, so this is my preferred route. And again, if you do use my link, I do get a small commission. So thank you very much if you do. Uh, if you're wondering again how you can use this guy in uh, say the Godot game engine and have full support for all the various different functionality, I do have this article I did back in June of 2023 showing you how to set up a plugin for using uh, a sprite directly in Godot. So that's going to give you full animation support for everything it created, all the layers, etc. And at the same time, there is a rare, reasonably new, so February of 2023, uh, importer for the Unity game engine that was released as well. Um, and again, walk you through that entire process right there. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. A Sprite 1.3 release. This actually came out very, very end of November, early December. Uh, but I figured if it took, you know, uh, was that seven years to get here, uh, I, I could cover this a couple of weeks late. So if you use A Sprite, go grab it. New version, new features, new functionality. It's great. Uh, and if you've never used it before, again, there is a free trial available. It, it's just uh, a very well-regarded pixel art animation tool. And now a bit of a tile mapping tool as well. Let me know what you think. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.